What a place to have a dew pond. If you uh, are wondering why my filming is so wobbly, well, I'm stood on, <laughs> I'm stood on a wall while spinning around trying to keep my footing amongst wire and posts and stone and bramble. And uh, pretty much that's a lot of my filming technique is uh, <laughs> perched in precarious positions. But yeah, this is probably, this is, uh, you know, this is, uh, I'm lost for words, really. Uh, this has been one of my main loves of working on this land. A fox used to walk from where we're stood now, straight, ahead, straight across down to the path to the right of the beach with the trees on there. And there was a pile of rubble Oh, I can't even imagine how high it was. It wasn't as high as the hut there. Um, you know, if we're, if we're looking like level, it was level with, say, the handle on the doors, halfway up. And it's just a pile of rubble all the way round with this p fox path through the middle. Uh, and now this is what? Well, 20 years later. I mean, we didn't really create it until, ooh, cool. I can't even remember. Well, probably about 10 years ago, its final incarnation. So this is only 10 years old. But we did have uh, a couple of leaks. So this is the third attempt. And it now works. And this is the highest it's ever been. And even that way, there is another dew pond about 20 miles away that I know of. It's not got water in anymore, but I, I know the sight of it. I know I've shown this before on this channel, but um, this, is, uh, this is for any new viewers, new subscribers. So hi to you. Uh, I do say hello to everyone who's who's a new subscriber, if their name appears. I say hello by name. And if I notice there are some, because I don't look at numbers, because that can have, that can affect you, or it affects me, because I put a lot of work into these. So, you know, it's, it's really hard to see, like you put lots of work into a video and you, you see that only two people have watched it, you know. Um, obviously that, that's not happening so much now, but it did used to. So um, anyway, I've planted quite a few of these trees and certainly all the ones around the pond, I've done most of those. Uh, they were a lot bigger. They were a replacement because of chemicals coming from the spray on the field killed some trees we planted before but I did I planted the previous ones as well uh, there's all kinds of willows around here and dogwood hazels um, and uh, viburnum opulus and then a beech wood beech and oak well beech on this side oak on the other side um, and uh, dead ash even further but uh, I'm gonna go and start burning that so yeah <laughs> I've had a, a reason oh there's some small leaf limes just below just beyond this clump of beaches here there's a clump of small leaf limes which are absolutely amazing and when I first came here we they were they were quite small um, in the early days and the deer used to be able to get and, and munch them. So I was worried for a while that they wouldn't survive, but they've done quite well. Uh, um, we have so much here, and I, an owl. I disturb the owl sometimes. I don't try to, I don't do it on purpose. 
And when I'm coming up here, not armed with the camera, the heron will be sat here. And, it, and because where he sits, he can hear you coming before, see if you imagine there's leaves on the trees, you can't see, but he can hear you, or she can hear you, and you hear a croak, and then you hear some big wings flapping. And then I get, I've, you know, because I haven't got my camera, I'm cursing. <laughs> uh, and we also, this is just lovely in the summer because we have, often have, um, swallows will come and, and dip and they will, I don't know what they do. Um, if I can find the footage, I'll show you here. Uh, we have frogs leaving their frog spawn. See, look how black that is. And the net's there to protect it from the ducks and the heron who come along and scoff the lot. And there are some lilies in here. Uh, I can't see any leaves at the moment. I can't even think, remember the name of this plant. This white flowering one now. Um, I'm not so good on, there's certain plants I'm not so good on, like water plants are not my thing, even though I'm here working with them. <laughs> but the, yeah, somewhere in the middle there, hopefully they're still alive, will be the, uh, the lilies of which I'll show you a picture now. And these, I just love these. This is the best they've ever looked. I know it hasn't been long, but look at that. Beautiful. Here's the Vabascum seeding itself. So that'll spread all through here. I mean, I love leave, leaving like the flower spikes of things through the winter, you know, even in suburban gardens, because unless they get too wet and look horrible, then cut them down. But when they're dry and the frost gets on them, they just look incredible. And certainly in the early morning mist of say, autumn and spring, you know, the, the cobwebs will gleam and shine with the silver spider fairy dust. <laughs> so yeah, that's it's just a little one just to show you this because this is one of the things I'm most proud of. You know, it's been a lot of work. Like sometimes you have a, a rake that doesn't quite reach the middle, but you know, you, certain things get overbalanced and you have to like get the certain weed out um, you know and if, if you can imagine having a two and a half meter rake it's not easy work and then you know there was <laughs> it was just blue clay uh, and, and limestones uh, well as you see here I've just planted this iris and uh, that here stones they're small compared with what can come out, but you can see. Yeah, you know, we can get big stones out of here. Here are the skylarks. They're just at it all the time. Anyway, where we've just looked at, that's where the pond is. I've brought you over the other side. And we can visit a song from the Lemmy era Hawkwind. If you're, a, if you're a fan of Hawkwind and the Lemmy, especially the Lemmy era, you'll know what song. No, it's not a silver machine. Distinctive bark. Of the goat willow. And if I zoom in up there, we can see the swaying of the pussy willow flowers. You 
in the breeze. They're too high to get a close shot of, unfortunately. But here she is. I, th I don't know if this is male or female. To oh. <laughs> yeah, see, somehow I know. I can tell. That's certainly a she, isn't it? So, anyone asking, how do you know? Ooh. No, this is a good bit of fusing. No, I'm glad I came over here. Oh, I love this tree. I always come and say hello to it at this time of year, especially. But look. Look at this fusing. Look at that! Talking of female trees and how do you tell? Well, I don't know. How do you tell? You know, some trees are male, some trees are female, and some trees are both. That's what nature has. Same with flowers. Some, you know, flowers are male and female. But also, ash trees, for example, they have, some have male flowers and some have female flowers. I think that's right, isn't it? I might get mixed up. God, there's a lot of, there's a lot of uh, female energy around here. Look at this one. Look at that. I mean, that looks like it's hollow. And look, this is really interesting too. It's like a... That's a proper stick insect. Now, if we come through here, mind your head, and uh, look at some of these. These are willows as well. Those, uh, that one certainly straight in front. Oh no, the two, the two trunks that you can see to the right and the left. And if you look up, you can see the pussy up there. And the one thing I really like about this one in particular is that uh, I brought the grandchildren or the grandchild of the people who own the land and got him to help me plant it. So I'm hoping that stays, but I thought that'd be kind of a magical thing to do. You know, I didn't I mean, they, they, you know, they do come here and do stuff with their grandparents, you know. And there is a... I have a strange coincidental story about some of their other grandchildren. But that's part of another bigger one. Honestly, I just... It's... It, it, oh, yeah, well, anyway, that's another one. So there we go. Anyway, anyone who knows the uh, Hawkwind album will uh, will know that Goat Willow is actually uh, an instrumental, isn't it? Lemmy doesn't play on it at all. Okay, so the limes are in front of us, the willows behind us, and the pond is ahead of us. And here we are, you see how the trees change the trunk. Let's go through this way. There you go. We're in them now. These are all small leaf limes. I say all, there's a few oaks and beech but in here, but yeah, 20 years ago, that was the height. It's what, two and a half times that. I mean, some of them are far higher than, you know, they're like three times higher than they were. So these are really going for it. Um, one of the things about small leaf lime in, in, in Britain is that, you know, old ones for sure are um, indicators of ancient woodland. Uh, so, you know, ancient woodland can have small trees on it. But if they've 
you know, if there are some, like for example, small leaf lime, uh, yellow archangel, which is a little plant, uh, and, and other things, will show you that that land has been ancient forest for a long, long time. You know, it's not, it's not just the size of trees. Uh, and someone left a comment in one of my videos, I can't remember which one it was, um, sorry. And I can't remember who it was who left the comment. Uh, it was when I was, I was going on about trees being cut down. And they said, well, why can't you just plant some more that are quick growing? And it's like, that's not, that's not solving the issue. Because an old slow growing tree creates an environment around it and an ecosystem and all the leaves that fall and rot over the centuries create the ground which encourages other plants to grow so i'll give you an example if you've got a meadow of orchids and you cut it at the wrong time they may not come back now then ever or you know for years Certainly, if it gets sprayed, you might as well say goodbye to them, you know. And Britain is a place that is very delicate. It's delicately balanced. We are between Siberia and the Gulf Stream. So it's like hot and cold. And so in between, we have this delicate balance. That's why our bluebells are arched and delicate that's what they are and any cross-pollination with the Spanish bluebells and they will go now if I can answer another comment that I get is, is people saying you know leave the fae alone don't go disturbing them well if they hadn't come to me <laughs> I wouldn't have known their existence really if I hadn't not really the other thing is, their habitat, these trees, these ancient forests, these ancient places, these old places, they're being cut down. And when they're cut down, they've got nowhere to go. So, if, if I'm not making it public and showing people these places in order for it to go into people's minds to not cut these places down and to, to leave them, to tend them, to go there with respect and all the rest, then they have somewhere to go. And it is something I'm very passionate about because, as I'll show you in another video, I have all kinds of creatures come to me when I'm out working. and all kinds of, of incidents and occurrences. Because what I'm doing is I'm creating habitat. We can't go back. It's been cut down, you know? The Beaker people came over, they cut it down, brought us farming. Then waves of people came and cut the trees down. And the Saxons were basically the, the last lot that cut the trees down. So places that are called Ley are very often, well, name is, <laughs> it is what it says on the tin, lay, trees were cut down to create these open spaces. And that's why the, the spirits came to me and kind of encouraged me to do it. I, it wasn't a plan. I just kind of followed, you know, in a way. So, you know, I suppose looking at it, I do a lot for them, you know. I haven't really had a life for 20 years because I've been so wiped out because nature takes from you. No matter what you put in, you will be exhausted. And most people I know in, who work in nature, <laughs> who work in nature, not who hang out in it, they're, they're in bed by 10. All of them, every single one, even those like 15 years younger than me. So that's why, you know, I would, I would tell you more about it. Um, you know, I was sort of led to them really, but uh, that's another video. So. <laughs> I'm full of videos waiting to be, to be done, not to mention new ones that get suggested or appear. 
So thanks for watching. See you next time. Ta-da.